Hi guys, and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. Today we're going to be talking about betas. This video was highly requested and um, one that I've been wanting to do because there's a lot of misinformation out there about betas and some of the videos that are trying to explain beta care I feel like ha are somewhat problematic. So I've tried to film this video several times and whatever I get filmed this time is going to be the video because it always ends up too long. So if this is long, I'm sorry. I've tried really hard to shorten it down. But the first thing that I wanna say is never trust something just because some person on the internet told you so. With the advent of the internet, there are many wonderful things that have happened in fish keeping. We have access to way more information than we ever had before. But that also means that not all of the information that we get are ne is necessarily going to be accurate. So just because I post a video saying this is what I think it needs, you need to take care of a beta, don't take that at face value. Do your own research. I'm going to link down below different resources. Some of them have conflicting information so you can come to your own conclusion about things. The second thing that I want to say is please don't take this video and use it as a bludgeon against people on beta forums. I have seen that so many times, particularly on Facebook, where people are really, really mean. And the truth is that yelling at someone or telling them they don't care about their fish or that they didn't research properly because they didn't research the same things you researched is not an effective way to help someone. It is an effective way to make people not want to own fish, which is not what I want. I want fish keeping to be accessible to everyone because I think fish keeping is wonderful. This is my own opinion based on the research that I have done and my own experience keeping betas, which I have kept on and off for about 25 years. And I also wanna say I'm talking about mostly beta splendens in this video, not wild caught betas, although I will mention a little bit about them because most of us are keeping the domesticated version. First off, if you've never owned fish before, which a lot of people who have betas, it's their first fish, I would really recommend that first you pause this video and watch this one, wherever the iCard is, um, all about the nitrogen cycle. That's gonna be really important no matter what kind of fish you are keeping. If you don't know about the nitrogen cycle, it's the number one reason why people kill fish. Moving on, assuming that you've watched that video or you're familiar with the nitrogen cycle, let's talk about betas' needs. Uh, the first thing that everyone agrees on is that betas are tropical fish. They can survive in lower temperatures. Betas are very hardy. They can survive in some very harsh environments. But what is best for betas is temperature from 77 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit, or I believe that's 20 five to 27.2 degrees Celsius. If that's wrong, I'll post the correct temperature here because I don't know Celsius, but I looked it up and I think those are the numbers I remember. So you need a thermometer in your tank to determine what your tank temperature is. And the vast majority of people are going to need a heater. Now I would, everything that I say, there's gonna be exceptions to every rule. So for example, myself, I live in Arizona and the inside of my house is 79 degrees at all times. I have thermometers in all of my tanks and none of my tropical tanks ever drop below 77 degrees. If they did drop below 77 degrees, I would put a heater in the tank. Um, so bear that in mind, but usually the temperature in your tank is a little bit lower than your house temperature. The second thing that everyone agrees on is that betas need a lid. Any fish can jump out of a tank, but betas specifically are adapted to jump. Wild betas, you may have heard, can live in puddles. And while that's true, it's only for part of the year during drought season. And in order to do this, they've, um, they have two adaptations. The first is a labyrinth organ that allows them to breathe air, so they don't need a ton of water movement. They can breathe surface air like other gouramis. And the second is that as their um, living area dries up, they can hop to other puddles nearby in order to survive. So betas are more prone to jumping than other fish even. So I would have some sort of cover on your tank. It doesn't have to have a light, but something to keep the beta from jumping out. The third thing that I would really recommend almost anyone in fish keeping have is a filter. Now it is true that it is possible to run a completely natural aquarium. I will link down below aquarium co-ops video all about that. Um, chances are if you are watching a video about beta care on YouTube, 
you probably are a beginner, you might not be, and most of us as beginners are going to need um, filtration. The natural aquariums can be really challenging and I, I personally consider it a little bit more advanced. Um, so betas, especially veil tail betas and double tail betas, anything that has a long flowing tail, don't do well with really high flow. So I would recommend a sponge filter if you are going out to buy a filter and you don't already have one. If you bought a kit, which most of us do when we get a beta, it probably came with a hang on back filter. Um, not all hang on back filters are too strong a flow. Watch and see. If your beta looks like they're struggling with the flow of the filter, you can buffer that flow um, with like a sponge or something. I will link down below Life with Pets and Creative Pet Keeping who have all kinds of videos on all kinds of really cool DIY stuff and I think both of them have videos on how to buffer your filter. So those are all kind of like non-controversial. Now for the controversial part, which is tank size. It's true that betas can live in very small quantities of water. Um, because of that labyrinth organ, they can. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert a picture from a breeding farm where you will see betas living in whiskey bottles. So a lot of people think that that is all you need for a beta. And while it's true that betas can live in those environments, and I've seen a lot of beta breeders argue this, um, and arguably beta breeders are the experts, everyone kind of agrees that the larger the tank, generally the less water changes you're going to have to do, the less swings and parameters you're going to have. So what you have to understand about breeders is that breeders are fully devoted to their fish and they are changing 100% of that water every single day. It is also really impractical when you have hundreds of fish in a spawn to give them all five gallons of water or something ridiculous like that. So, and that's also a temporary situation. So while it's true that betas can survive in that, your life is going to be so much easier if you have a larger body of water. Now, a lot of people will quote on beta forums, surviving is different than thriving. But the truth is that the size of the tank is something that someone somewhere decided and then often gets parroted back. And we don't know for sure. So some places say five gallons, some places say two and a half gallons. Other people will argue that one gallon is best. Personally, I wouldn't wanna keep a beta in anything smaller than two and a half gallons based on the research that I personally have done. Um, but I will link down below the only scientific, I say that in quotes, data that I've been able to find on the actual study of this because everything else is based on opinion. And I will say that there's some problems with that research paper that I did find. Um, it, there's some controls that were not taken into account and I've seen breeding forums um, find them to be problematic. That said, the study compares 1.25 gallons of water to five gallons of water. And what I got from reading the study as a lay person, not as a scientist, is that um, the smaller quantities of water are harder to keep heated properly. Now, a lot of people will say that you can't cycle a tank in less than two and a half gallons. That has not been my experience. I have successfully cycled a one gallon tank before, but it is going to be a little bit more challenging as the parameters shift. So personally, I would recommend two and a half gallons, but you're probably here because you already have your beta in something like a one gallon tank. If that's the case, my first priority would be a filter and a heater, and we can worry about upgrading tank size in a little bit. If you haven't bought your tank yet, great, you're ahead of most people. Um, yeah, I would go ahead and just start with a larger tank. In my experience, the cost of the tank is almost always exactly the same or very, very close. I was at PetSmart yesterday, and I saw one gallon tanks for like $22, and then I saw like the great choice brand, which includes the filter and the light for $29. You can also get tanks on sale for the dollar per gallon sale at Petco. Um, you could do something like even a 10 gallon tank for $10, but it's going to end up probably costing you more than a kit in the long run because you're going to have to get everything else additionally separate. So if it were me, I would recommend returning your one gallon tank or whatever size tank you got and getting a larger tank because 
it probably costs the same amount and in some cases it costs less. If you're on a very limited budget, I know a lot of times kids get betas and then their parents aren't necessarily willing to go get an upgraded tank. What I would do is you can get like a Rubbermaid tub very cheap or you probably already have something like this in your house and you can move your filter and a heater into a Rubbermaid tub and then you've got more volume of water to work with. So that's one solution. Um, so I hope that I covered that delicately. I hope that I covered that delicately because people can be really mean about it. Um, now let's talk a little bit about some other things that you're going to need. You're going to need water dechlorinator. While there are exceptions to every rule that I've said here, um, most people have chlorine in their tap water. You don't have to buy beta water, that's a waste of money and it's a gimmick, and you don't have to buy beta specific dechlorinator. The only difference between a beta dechlorinator and any other kind of dechlorinator is that the beta one is more diluted so that you can do um, like it in drops instead of measure it out. Personally, I use Chem Prime, um, which will be helpful if you are having to do a fish in cycle. Um, and I talk more about Chem Prime and fish in and fishless cycles in my nitrogen cycle video. So that's fine, but any use a chlorinator. Another thing that you're going to need is food. You've got to feed your beta. Betas are insectivores, which means that they eat insects. So um, they're gonna need a carnivorous diet. Personally, I like to do pellets for my beta. Um, I like that they float at the top of the water and I, I think in my beta brain that um, they look more like insects to the beta. But the, the other thing that I found is that flake food, which they will eat and you can use flake food and it doesn't have to be a beta specific flake food, just something that's meant for carnivorous fish. Um, I find that flake food will pollute your tank and so you'll end up having to um, do water changes more frequently. Betas also really like uh, frozen bloodworms, so that's something that you can feed occasionally, but it's not your first priority and it's okay if you don't give them bloodworms. It's like a little treat. Um, also, I like to grow mosquito larvae for my betas, so you can take like a little bucket of water, put it outside, and most often mosquitoes will come to it and breed. The only thing with that is make sure that you scoop the larva out every single day or you're gonna end up with a mosquito problem. But um, that's one way to get free food for your beta. As far as decor goes, let's talk about substrate, which is your sand, your rock, whatever you have at the bottom of your tank. Betas don't care. Um, there's no reason that you have to have a specific, specific substrate in the bottom of your tank. It's a place that you could save money that's purely for your own enjoyment to have a substrate there. If you're planning on putting plants in the tank, um, I would get a substrate so you have somewhere to bury the plants in, but you can even get plants like moss balls or nubius, which you can tie onto like a decoration and not have to have any kind of substrate. It's also easier to clean without substrate. Betas have very delicate fins, so you want uh, decor that will not scrape up their fins. The rule is if you can take a piece of nylon or pantyhose and spread it over whatever your plant or your decoration is without ripping the pantyhose, it's safe for your fish. So smooth, think smooth things. A lot of people say no plastic plants. Well, it's true that some plastic plants are too sharp. Um, a lot of them are plenty soft enough that if you can put nylons over them, they're fine. Personally, I like silk plants because I know for sure that those aren't going to rip up my betas fin. And like I said, betas are not the strongest swimmers and they don't do well with current, so having somewhere for them to hide or rest against, they make all kinds of things, like beta hammocks and beta logs, and you can put little like caves and stuff in there. Um, but you don't necessarily have to spend all that money on that. There's a lot of DIY options for those kinds of things for your beta to rest on. So that's kind of a little bit about decor. Um, you can add live plants. Live plants are going to help you with um, waste management um, and some really good live plants if you're interested in, for beginners, are anarchist, um, broadleaf live plants like anubias or java ferns are really nice for them to rest against and they're very easy. Duckweed and moss balls are also really, really easy, easy plants to grow. Um, so 
I I like plants um, and betas naturally come betas in the wild I should say naturally come from very heavily planted areas and they seem to do well with that kind of stuff um, I'm gonna link down below four beta channels that I think will kind of be helpful for you as well as that study that I talked about and the video of uh, Corey talking about natural aquariums and I'm also going to link down below um, some of my favorite beta supplies. If you do find yourself in a situation where your beta is a little bit overstocked, it's not an immediate emergency. The most important thing is going to be filtration and temperature and then you can eventually upgrade them and you're not a bad person for that. There's so much misinformation out there and honestly, I could be wrong. Any of us could be wrong. Maybe five years from now we're going to say that betas need 10 gallons. Who knows? One last thing that I do want to talk about really quickly is tank mates. I'm going to do a whole video devoted to tank mates for betas. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there, but in my experience over the 25 years of keeping betas on and off, I've always had good luck with betas having tank mates. That being said, never house a male beta with another beta, even a female. And I wouldn't even do like a divided tank with a male beta and a female sharing the same water because what I've heard, and this is not something I have personal experience with, so I could be wrong here, but all of my research has indicated that sometimes that can cause the female to become egg bound, which is very, very bad for her. Females, however, can all live together. So that's called a sorority. It's more advanced, and I would really encourage you to do some research before you um, want to set up a sorority. I will talk more about tank mates in another video. I hope that this was helpful and I hope that I talked about this in a way that is nuanced because it is much, it's not as cut and dry as people think and um, we all need to stop insulting each other for the way that we keep fish. I think it's fine to be passionate about fish health, but there are productive ways to help people and then there are not productive ways. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss that video coming up about tank mates or any other videos I do. I have videos coming up about goldfish, salt water, all kinds of things. And um, let us know down in the comments if you have a beta, what kind of beta is it? Does it have a name? Let us know, um, and I will talk to y'all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.